Hello, and welcome to the next episode of the Live Your Spa Life Show. Spa Life is a lifestyle that accepts that accomplishment and harmony coexist. The spa and spa life, the SPA, is for seek power always, that power within you to do your deeper work in the world. I am so thrilled to have our next guest today, which is Jennifer DePlessis, and she is America's mortgage mastery mentor who helps sales professionals feel overwhelmed or when they're feeling overwhelmed and stressed out because of business, trying to multiply results in record time and have the courage to say yes to their personal lives. Jennifer, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Well, I love the fact that, I mean, one, you are a, a hard charger, you've made a huge imprint in your field, but I love your focus on the personal life. And before we jump into that, you are a very a special blend of flavor where in a very male dominated world, you crushed lots of records in this. Um, would you like to share like what that path has been and what some of those numbers are? Well, you're asking me to step into my power, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I am not one to toot my own horn. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I had a 35 year career in the mortgage space um, and, uh, you know, transitioned out of that two years ago. And during that time, I funded over a billion dollars in mortgage loans, which there's about 20, maybe 30 people that have done that. And when you think about the fact that we now have 483,000 loan officers in the country, um, back at, there was a time when we had 780,000, um, you know, that that's pretty sur surmountable. Not many people can do it and particularly women. And then, um, you know, I mean, I just, I was, I was in the top 200 loan officers for five years and, uh, that's really saying something. And that's really what propelled my practice, you know, in coaching and podcasting and speaking. Yes. And I just, I love that so much because, you know, it takes a lot of focus. It takes a lot of drive uh, to really know what it is that you want out of life. And I just think that it's amazing that you're someone, you know, you and I are sisters with the whole designing your life versus just living by default. Yeah. So I'd love for you to really share about, this is a really is an important part of, you know, having the balance that you wanted to have in your life. And I know that balance is such this weird word, you know, it's more about yeah. what's the harmony and, you know, <laughs> what is it that, that can actually have a little bit of both, but you know, you're not really going to get to that balance part. Yeah. Yeah. And actually I, I am not a fan of the word balance at all <laughs> um, because, you know, when you think about balance, you know, you think about a scale, it's 50, 50, right. You're just always balancing. And I always, and I believe I even shared this when we, we were talking in the first time we met is, you know, if you're standing on two boats, uh, neither of them are getting attention. You're stressed out because you're trying to balance them. And that's, that was where the issue is, where it's at the core is if you're trying to balance, you're the one who's getting hurt. Um, they are getting hurt too. Your clients are getting hurt because they're not getting your full attention, your children, your, your spouse, everybody, you know, is not getting the full attention. And, you know, someone told me once before, I love you to death, but you're never present. And I wow. was like, Oh God, that hurts. <laughs> so that was, you know, one of the catalysts that, that changed my life and said, you know, how can I be more present instead of try to balance everything out and try to be the superwoman like that. And I found that I was more of a superwoman when I stopped balancing when I became all in in one area and focused 100% of my attention there and then shifted and went to a different area and focused that. And so that's really where I started, you know, creating the, my montage of master your priorities so that you can master your life. And so it's really about priorities for me. Yes. Um, yeah. So hopefully that answered, that answered that question. I probably didn't go back to how it all happened, but I, I had to go down that road. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, I really love that because it's so important for our listeners. And, you know, I throw out that balance because in Spa Life, we talk about harmony, right? Yeah. Harmony is when many different things come together to yeah. allow that, that music to happen in our life. And I think that people get stuck in feeling that they have to have balance. So I so appreciate you sharing that perspective that I think we've all experienced that that doesn't work, but we'll continue to push through that because, you know, that is just what's being said out there. And, yeah. and I think that that is really 
really what's helped uh, you be successful, not only in your business, but in your life. And I'd love for you to share, you know, there's so many disempowering things that happen. There's like, you know, challenges that happen along the way that yeah. we have to uh, maneuver through in order to get to that success. So what were some yeah. of those lessons that uh, had you kind of wake up just like that, having to be more present? What were some of those things that came up for you that uh, you knew you'd had to make some changes? Yeah, well, it started on an evening when we decided we were going to go to dinner um, with the kids, you know, and um, immediately I got a phone call. And this is one of the things where I said, you know, that I help people say yes to themselves, which sometimes means saying no to your clients, um, which is hard for us as entrepreneurs, right? right. That's that balance part. And, uh, you know, I got a phone call from a client and sure enough, I took it. I took it and I went outside and I was walking up and down that concrete balance beam. And we all know what that is, the little curb bump, right? Yes. And I was walking back and forth, talking on the phone, shifting my legs back and forth, waving at people, walking in and out, poking and saying, you know, oh yeah, I'm on the phone with the client, you know, back and forth. That, con that And that really was that balance beam was what I was saying, oh gosh, there is no such thing as balance, right? And I happened to look over into the window of the restaurant and there was my family creating memories, laughing, enjoying time together. And again, I wasn't in them. Mm. And it happened over and over and over. And it just this time struck me as that I was sabotaging everything to achieve this, you know, climbing the corporate ladder, right? Tr proving to everybody. And I, and I realized I had, I needed to stop proving and start living. And that was really the catalyst that, that changed. And there were all kinds of opportunities before that. And after that, I still did the same thing as I was trying to figure out how do I, how do I do this? How does it, how can I have my cake and eat it too, but not have balance because it wasn't working. And yes. that, that really was the story that, that changed my life and, you know, made, made me become more present with my family so that I wouldn't lose my family. Yes. Yes. Well, you know, you have that realization, but then how did you actually overcome that sabotage so that you could excel yeah. in your business? Because I think sometimes there's the mindset that, you know, if I, you know, let up on the gas and then I hanging out with my family, my business is going to tank. Yeah. So what were some of those strategies <laughs> yeah. that you were able to yeah. do to actually well, make and that this happen? Is what it, yeah. And this is what I love about coaching my clients because I have, I want to tell you about a client I have right now. She, a year ago, she was calling me. And so you have to give you some, con, you know, some context in the mortgage space. She was closing seven loans a month, helping seven families every month. And and that's kind of an okay producer. It's not great at all. It's just kind of an okay producer. And she was crying literally on every phone call. Just, blah, 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 blah. you know, I can't balance everything. I don't know what to do. And, uh, you know, she just had a baby in July a couple months ago. She just had her second child. She is doing four times the volume. And she's just like, yeah, you know, it's great. <laughs> I go, aren't you happy? And she's like, yeah. I am. <laughs> She's wow. just so much more, you know, present and so much more happy and stuff. And, and that is what happens. And, you know, and I was doing the same thing. I was kind of bouncing on, you know, trying to crack the glass, you know, a glass ceiling and kind of bouncing on a certain amount of volume, you know, 40, $50 million a year and working like a dog. I called my house hotel home, you know, I'm home. I'd go to bed really late. I'd eat poorly, not taking care of myself. Couldn't sleep because I was worried about everything. Get up and do it all over again. And I just said, you know, something that something definitely has to change in the formatting that I'm doing. And what I decided to do was really take a look at core values. And, you know, I believe that a life of values adds value everywhere in your life. And so I looked at my core values and said, you know what, am I, align am, am I aligning my work with it? But more importantly, am I setting boundaries with it? Or am I just saying, hey, these are my core values and, you know, that's what they are, but I'm not living them every day. And, uh, you know, I ask people all the time is, hey, uh, you know, what are your core values? And they, they answer with uh, family, like it's a question, <laughs> right? And I, well, I don't know. Is that a core value or is that a question? Are you asking me? You know, and so if your family is important, then why are you working till 11 o'clock at night? Why are you working on weekends if it's truly important? So I realized that what we do as entrepreneurs is we run around eating 
it, it's like we do all these activities because everyone says we should, but it's like eating soup with a fork. <laughs> you know, we're just eating all day long. We go home, we think we did things, but we're just not full and we're not fulfilled more importantly. Yeah. So aligning those core values and saying what truly was important to me and putting me first and my family first, and then building a business that was laser focused, super intentional, that also aligned with those, those um, core values so that my activities were diminished. I didn't do so many things. And what ended up happening is I ended up doing a hundred million dollars a year and working four days a week mm, right. because and I got real clear on what I call, you know, the five, my five strategies for lifestyle business mastery. Well, I know that some of our listeners are going, okay, sounds great that she's making her family a priority, but how does that make my business excel and how do I have more value in <laughs> yeah. that? So I'd love for you to yeah. share more about those five strategies. Yeah. And I definitely will. Let me give you another little example here. Yes. You know how when you go on vacation, getting ready to go on vacation, all of a sudden you get a lot done and you're very intentional, very laser focused and even say, oh gosh, maybe I can't even go on vacation because now I have all this business coming in. And we used to say, hey, go on vacation because that's when you get busy. All right. <laughs> so what if you could go on vacation every day? metaphorically, mm -hmm. right? What if you could yes. go on vacation every day? You got in and you were so intentional about what you were doing that you accomplished more in that day than what you would normally do in a week or two weeks of time. And then you get out of there and go do what you love to do. And you know, I'm a competitive ballroom Latin and swing dancer. That's what I do. I want to get in, do what I need to do, and then go have fun with my family or fun dancing or go to the winery or shoot guns because I'm a Marx woman as well. <laughs> so I want to put that first. And so having that clarity, which is step one. So of the five steps, the first is clarity, clarity of your message, clarity of your goal, your, um, your core values and clarity of the expectations you have for yourself. I don't believe in goal setting. Yes, no. please. <laughs> I want you, to, you talk about goals being too dreamy. So I definitely want goals you to Goals are too on that. dreamy. Yeah, they are. <laughs> you know, it's like you can't say, you know, my goal is for my five-year-old to go to go to bed at night at, you know, at night at eight o'clock every night. That's my goal. No, it's my expectation. And it's funny about what it does and it triggers something in your brain that that says, you know, the expectation has some teeth to it versus a goal that seems so far out there. And so many people don't know how to put goals together anyway. And of course we do business planning, which has goals in it, but it's really what is the expectation you're setting out for yourself and holding yourself accountable, being disciplined. If I don't discipline myself, everyone around me has the opportunity to discipline me through their emails and their phone calls and their texts and their, their wants and needs. And so I have to be able to discipline myself first. And so, Everything that I do in Lifestyle Business Mastery is intended to attract clients rather than chase them. Mm -hmm. And so everything we do is getting clear on that message so we can attract the people that we want, not try to sell everything to everybody, which is selling nothing to no one. Right. So we want to attract the right people to save time. We want to be clear about our goals and our, I mean, our uh, core values and our expectations for ourselves so that we can get in and only do the work that's going to serve those expectations and those goals. Yeah. So that's what clarity does. Then it's about your credibility. Your credibility is leveling yourself up, right? And especially in COVID crisis, you know, this is the opportunity where it either creates really great leadership or, or it can crush you, right? Mm -hmm. And so what we want to do is we want to make sure that our credibility is high. Are we a market influencer that when people say, I need this widget, I call that person. And so if we level that up, are we serving our clients instead of selling them? Are we edu selling them so that their lives improve? And that's what happens in credibility. Then we move on to community. Community is how are you working with your clientele, your entire database, right? Everybody in your database. Are you nurturing or are you neglecting your database? Mm. Because being able to do things faster means returning those same clients. So we tend to think, got a lead, closed, close some business. Got a lead, close some business. I need more leads. And we have the binoculars on all the time looking for more leads and we do need them 
But if we can think of our business as an infinity sign where we're moving people in through a loyalty, you know, a great experience and then moving them into loyalty, they will come back and that saves us time because it's attracting our clients back to us as well as their friends. Mm. And so that's really important with community. The other thing with community is working with people that complement and not complicate you and your practice. We have a tendency to want to work with everyone. <laughs> and we get to the point where, you know, where depending on what your age is, right? I'm 56, I'll be 57 in a, in a couple of weeks is I get to the point where, you know, I don't have to work with everyone. I only want to work with people that really bring joy to my life, right? And, and understand my core values and respect my core values. And then we move to communication, which is setting up and establishing a scalable system of being able to provide customer experience, not customer service, customer experience, so that your clients are compelled to tell their friends about you. And that creates a revolving door of referrals, again, attracting clients. Mm. But it has to be efficient for you because you don't have all the time and be effective for them. And then the last part is continuity. And I always bookend these two things with continuity and the clarity. Continuity is the consistency. You can't lose weight eating junk food all week and then dieting one day. And so the consistency, the priority management is what's key. And those five, those five strategies are what created this, you know, multi-million dollar business that I created. And once I figured out that that was the key for me, that's the code. That's the code. I always call it cracking the top producer code. That's the code for it. So I know that was a really long answer because you might have just wanted step one, but that were that's all of it. Because if you can get your hands around all of that, you can build your legacy and live your legacy at the same time. Oh no, okay. Jen, I appreciate this, the full, the full scope of that because it is so clear. And one of my favorite aspects was that affinity circle to really look at the people that you are around, that it's not just their in and out, that you know, there's always a next level or who they know, or you know, how is it that you can actually have that uh, that customer experience, right? And just looking yeah. at, you know, when you put yourself into it, I could almost feel myself almost just like moving along this ride. And now this next thing is happening and, and it becomes more effortless. And I love how you really talk about this, you know, what we are choosing to do in our life. Like if are we saying like family with a question mark, when we get clear <laughs> about those questions, those core values. Um, I like to talk about the calendar as being your mind in action. Like if yeah. you say family is your thing, but your family's nowhere on your calendar, are they really your core value? And yeah. we have some of those wake up moments, like when, you know, we maybe aren't spending that time with our family or, or, you know, this is where we get to make some of those decisions and how, what are some of the parameters around this? And I think this is such a valuable thing for our listeners to really look at is just doing more doesn't necessarily propel your business to move yeah. forward. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that that is so such clear a about that. So it's such a fallacy, you know, it's called the Parkinson's law, you know, and I'm paraphrasing it in, is that if you're given, you know, a, a month to do something, you'll take the month. But if you're given an hour, you'll get it done in an hour. Yes. So what we want to do is act like we're going into our office, like we're going on vacation at four. We have to leave for the airport at four. So we've got to get work done. We don't have time to mess around. Yes. We have to be very clear about what we can do and what we can't, where we can say yet. Yeah. You know, one of my years I had a, you know, every year I have a, a theme a word for my year. And this year happens to be simplicity. I'm trying to simplify some more things in my business. But one of my years was I'm not going to be a yes woman. I can't say yes to everything because you're going to start getting less and less and less and less of me. Yes. So I have to say no to the right people or to the wrong people, right? And yes to the right and wrong people. And I think that that's part of it too, is that we try to be everything to everybody. And it's like, you know, just simmer down now. Let's just slow it down. Let's consume what fulfills you in your work and what fulfills you at home. You know, there were times where I was on the out the chain link fence on the outside of my son playing baseball and I was on the phone walking back and forth, saying doing that same thing, cupping my hand over the phone because there wasn't a mute button at the time and going, Way to go, honey. <laughs> and going right back to my business. I wasn't there. Right. I was never there. Yeah, Never. such an important distinction, you know, and I love this, you know, aspect of 
always having something on your calendar to look forward to, whether that's an actual vacation or a time with, you know, one of your children or whatever that looks like, there is something so powerful about working towards something. And when mm -hmm. it's in alignment with your values and it's something that actually means something to you, I, I love that because you do put the accelerator on. It's amazing what you can get done in a short amount of time when mm -hmm. you, you got something that you really want to do that's at the end of that and kind of having that uh, self-accountability and the self like reward a system to actually um, support you. And I think that anything that we set up in our environment and our space that elevates that, that actually helps us do that uh, can really make a difference. In fact, one of the things mm -hmm. I love asking my guests is, uh, you know, your environment is, is so important. We have different experiences in our bedroom versus our kitchen or, or our office. So what is your favorite room in your home and why? Favorite room in the house. Um, it's my actually. It's actually my office <laughs> because uh, behind my office, and of course you're not seeing it here because we had some technical issues. I'm now in my husband's office, which is I'm not my favorite place to be. His <laughs> uh, <laughs> walls are kind of boring. No wonder he comes home the way he does. Um, but. Uh, yeah, it, it is my office because I've set up my office so that I have a thinking chair, right? And it's a little swivelly, comfy chair, and it's my, my thinking chair. I'm an avid reader. I'm a speed reader. I read many, many, many books. But right off of my uh, office, I have French doors onto a, a little porch where I have a swing. And I'll go out there and talk to people while I'm swinging. And that, you know, when I'm able to touch with nature, get in touch with nature, because one of my not core values, but when I look at core values and say what, you know, a lot of people, when you're deciding a core value, it's really a good idea to say what you don't like, because that will help you decide the core value. It's the opposite, actually. It's assessing the things that drive you nuts. You know, I don't like when people lie. Okay, well then honesty becomes a core value, right? So that it's easier to do that process of elimination. So the other part of it that I have my clients do is what fulfills you? What makes you happy? You know, if you go to dinner with some friends and you walk out and say, we need to do this more, then that becomes something that fulfills you. For me, it's watching squirrels and birds and all that kind of stuff while I'm sitting on this porch. So the more I can do of that, that means that in order to get more of that, I have to get really clear on what I'm going to be doing in my office so I don't spend my time sitting at my desk. I can be out there enjoying myself. Yes. Yes. I love this so much. My, my friends tease me because when we do something together, I'm always pulling out the calendar to put the next thing on there because yes. we have the next thing to actually look forward to and to have that experience together. And I love, and this makes complete sense that your office is your favorite room because one of the things, because I've been in thousands of homes as a police officer and I also noticed with like my clients that the ones that are struggling in their work hate their office. Like this is yeah. a room that's usually the darkest room in the home. There's, you know, clutter everywhere. There's confusion that's happening in this space. Of course, they're not going to excel. So I love the visualization of being able to be on the swing. You know, the first person that told me that there's been a swing off their office, which is <laughs> magnetic, right? I mean, yes. talk about just being in flow, right? I yeah, mean, I, just, I love it. that. Yeah. So it really matters, like what kind of environments mm -hmm. that we are creating for ourselves and what our intention is and what that actually looks like um, of, of what we're setting forth. And I love the clarity around uh, the value. Sometimes we do need to look at what's not working or what do we not want in our life to really step into uh, embracing. And one of the things I love about what you do with your values is that you embody them in very actionable ways. Like you, you don't just look at a value like this is the word of the value. This is the energy behind the value. This is the action that happens. This is the connection that happens as part of it. And when you know that, that becomes the fuel to you then to do your business, to be more focused and have that happen. So I think that that is such mm -hmm. a, a powerful thing uh, that happened for you. Was there, you know, uh, a time other than being, you know, watching your kids through the window while being on the phone that really was a distinguishing moment for you where you weren't doing that? Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, I... I think for me, you know, this would go back even further uh, for me. You know, my father was an alcoholic. My mother was a verbal abuser. So 
they were always like, I could never tell, is he drinking because she's verbal abusing? Is she verbal right. abusing because he drank? I, you know, and I was always in the middle of it. And I was an only child until I was 12 and a half years old. So I didn't have anyone to, you know, go cuddle with and sit in a bedroom and let them fight it out, you know, and um, but I, I was one of 37 first cousins and am one of 37 first cousins. And my one of my uncles um, had a nickname for everybody, uh, everybody. Dan the man, Gene the machine, Farton Martin. I, I mean, really, everybody had a name. But mine was Jenny who ain't got a penny. And so as a little girl, I used to carry a penny around in my shoe because to me it was a joke. I said, no, I have a penny. Check mm. me out. I have a penny. I didn't really understand it. But one day he told me, you know, Jenny, you're going to be just like your family. You're going to be poor. You're going to be an alcoholic, you know, all, all of those things. And there was a catalyst that I don't want to talk about on this show because it's bad things. But, I, you know, it was a catalyst that said, you know what, I'm not going to be like that. I'm going to prove to everybody that I am much bigger and much better than that and stepping in really into my power, right, and just going out. And so I was runner-up Miss Colorado, and I was a state tennis champion, and I was pre-med. I was going to be a cardiologist, and I played flute and piccolo in the Colorado Spring Symphony, and I had straight A's, and I was a cheerleader. I mean, it makes me sick to think about it. But that's how I was proving myself, proving me and trying to step into my power. And then I met my wonderful husband, whom we are high school sweethearts. People call us Danny and Sandy from Greece because I'm much more <laughs> polished. He's much more not. <laughs> but this, it's a yin and yang. But we met at 14 and 15 years old. We've been married 37 years now. And, uh, you know, we, we've known each other for years and years. But he allowed me to play that other side, that Danny side, right, that let it go, get out there, experience things, stop going the grind. And that was really, really helpful for me. And of course, it was only a half the story because I still pushed, pushed, pushed to prove to people, um, you know, and all of these catalysts happened. And one day I said, you know what, I've built this beautiful machine. And this is really important for entrepreneurs. You don't have to do it all. You don't. You can have other people while you go in and work for four hours in a day and then go play. You can have other people working for that balance of the four hours doing the things that you can't stand and take you <laughs> eight hours anyway. And that's why you're working so many hours. Right. And so that was that was really important for me was to, to sort of get the chip off of my shoulder of they need me. They want me. I built it. They want me. But no, they want the experience I built. The, the experience I created, and if I could manifest that by hiring other rock stars in other areas where I was now not so good at because the volume was there, I, the, I couldn't be perfect in every single one of these. When I stepped aside from that, I was closing 18 loans a month. That's the number. 18 loans a month. I couldn't break through that ceiling. I had enough volume that I could, but I just couldn't. I was working long hours, sleeping horribly, eating horribly. And when I stepped aside and let someone else do it, I didn't go to 19. And that's all I wanted, right? Like, get me past that goal. <laughs> I went to 26. And then I went to 30. And then I went to 50 fundings a month, 50 families helping. Wow. And I know every one of those families. I don't know every detail. And I don't have to. But I do have to be present with them. And that was what I decided was going to be the part of my business that I wanted to emulate. Oh, I love that so much because it's so important to realize that, you know, there is kind of that running in the back of the mind as an entrepreneur that you have to do everything. And we hear yeah. like, oh, it's great to have team, but what, how do you, you know, onboard that and what's that look like and, and what parts are you actually going to give away? And, you know, I think sometimes we, where we know to focus on only the things we can do, sometimes there's that, still that mindset around, well, I have to do everything in order to excel. So I love that just getting out of your own way and accepting that health that that became exponential. I mean, that was a game oh my gosh. in your it, business. Then I had other problems. Yeah, I had other problems. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, what do I do now? Um, right. Yeah. And so, you know, my book is, my, I have a book called Launch, How to Take Your Business to New Heights. And in the book, I break it out in three sections, finder, minder, and grinder. And so what I would suggest is just write on a piece of paper, three columns, finder activities, which are lead generating activities, Minder activities, which is the customer experience, serving the client, you know, responding and getting a contract out and those types of things. 
And then the grinder is booking your hotel, booking, you know, ordering some stuff on Vistaprint, <laughs> all those little things. And find out where you're spending most of your time. Most entrepreneurs spend most of their time in minding and grinding, yes. in mining and grinding, yet we love finding. So carve out the job duties and then hire for that position rather than getting to that critical mass of, I just need a body which then takes you into drive-by delegation, <laughs> horrible yeah. delegation, and pointing fingers and saying they were, they were bad, they were bad instead of thumb pointing, I wasn't prepared. I didn't do the right thing as an entrepreneur and an owner and having that ownership. Because when you hire for the right job and you hire a rock star, they're going to do it 10 times better than you could ever do it, ever, and yeah. particularly when you're trying to do all these multiple hat positions, you're just haphazard at everything. Yes. Oh, that is so important, especially that part about, you know, delegating versus abdicating, right? You still mm -hmm. want to be, you know, involved in your business and getting really clear on the type of help that you actually need. Uh, one of the things yeah. I found with some of my clients that, you know, they aren't training their team as well. They're just kind of throwing it out there because they don't want it anymore, right? So you got to get yeah. really clear about, getting that right person that either has it or that you can get them the skills that they need to do that. So I love the distinguishing um, things that you, you're really looking at that you were able to just, you know, expand to, to the way that you did and have a life, right? Because this is what we want. Right. This is what we're talking about here in, in yeah. spa life is to, uh, to actually have that life that you're building that you actually enjoy what you built. I mean, we all know people who've built things that they're like, oh my God, I don't, how did I get here? I don't want to be here. And right. so having that awareness around uh, what kind of life that you actually want to yeah. live is, is so, so important. And I know that our listeners are going to want to stay in contact with you and I'd love for you to share how they can do that. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for, for doing that. You know, I love giving my email address because people want to connect fast. So get a hold of me at Jen at jenduplessis.com. Just reach out and say, you heard, you heard me on this podcast and say, you know, I just have a question. I have a clarity question. You know, what, what can I, you know, how can I make this better? And I, you know, I love, love, love helping people. Um, the other thing is that we have a free gift for everyone. You can go to genduplusscom forward slash seven, the number seven strategies, plural strategies. And there is a document where we just go through a brainstorming session, you know, like what are some seven strategies that I can change the mindset of my business? And part of that is, defining your core values, creating boundaries, what's, where are you stuck, right? Just so that you slow down so you can speed up your success rather than speeding up to slow down your life. Mm. Oh, I love that distinction so much. Well, Jen, thank you so much for your time and your wisdom. We so appreciate you being here on the show. Thank you so much for having me. It's always so fun. We have so much fun talking. I cannot wait for you to be at one of my events. I mean, we're going to have so much fun. So. Uh, <laughs> Definitely. You and I have fun in our values. So. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Uh, well, thank you so much again. And I want to thank our audience as well. Uh, our time is such a precious resource and we so appreciate you being here with us. This is how we get positive messages out in the world. So please make sure that you share this and we so appreciate your five star rating and put in any comments that you have. What are some of your questions that you have here? You know, make sure that you tag both Jen and myself. Uh, because we want to support you in any way that we can. And until we connect again, live your spot life. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.